Obviously based on the EC horror comics of the 1950s, 1982's Creepshow is part love letter, part wistful childhood memory, and part wouldn't it be cool if George Romero and Stephen King teamed up together project. The Senate Subcommittee on Juvenile Delinquency, a real thing, held hearings in 1954 on the crime and horror comics of the day. The committee concluded in one report, the subcommittee wishes to reiterate its belief that this country cannot afford the calculated risk involved in feeding its children, through comic books, a concentrated diet of crime, horror, and violence. There was substantial, although not unanimous, agreement among the experts that there may be detrimental and delinquency-producing effects upon both the emotionally disturbed child and the emotionally normal delinquent. Children of either type may gain suggestion, support, and sanction from reading crime and horror comics. Entire books were written in the 50s warning that comic books were the direct cause of juvenile delinquency. Seemingly because of the bad publicity, most comics companies in the mid-1950s agreed to start participating in voluntary self-censorship. The horror comics of the early 1950s were gone, but for in the minds of the impressionable juvenile delinquents, who would go on to be the main creative influences of the next few decades. Stephen King, the writer of Creepshow, had already written Carrie, Salem's Lot, and The Shining. Cujo came out the year before Creepshow, cementing King as a staple in American fiction and proving that he was not just a 1970s horror writer flash in the pan. King wrote three of the five segments in Creepshow. He starred in a segment, The Lonesome Death of Geordie Verrill, an obvious reference to the Bob Dylan song, The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. King's son appears beside Tom Atkins in the frame story. That's why God made fathers, babe. That's why God made fathers. George A. Romero, the director, was already well known for 1968's groundbreaking Night of the Living Dead and 1978's comic book-like romp through a zombie shopping mall, Dawn of the Dead. The year before Creepshow, he wrote and directed Night Riders, a non-horror film starring a young but already permanently balding Ed Harris. In Night Riders, the characters themselves confront Romero's own perennial dilemma. Do we stay true to our ideals, or do we take the lump of money from this big promoter so that we can get glitzier costumes and better publicity? It's no surprise that Romero felt a kinship with the creators of EC Comics. Both stuck to their principles, to their detriment. But Romero's success with Creepshow, which was number one at the box office, knocking out First Blood and grossing $21 million, is a rare example of when staying true to artistic vision also happens to result in financial success. And indeed, the success of Creepshow allowed Romero to create and produce the television series Tales from the Dark Side, which aired from 1983 to 1988. Comic book imagery is omnipresent in the film Creepshow, from the hand-drawn frames to the cartoonish background colors and lighting to the skewed angles. Pay attention to how the music evolves over the course of the film, from synths to weird spoon sound effects, straight piano, to finally, unknowable atonal sounds beneath ragtime source music. In each of the five segments, ask yourself whether they represent horror and depravity standing alone, or whether there is not some form of recognizable, albeit twisted, retribution, revenge, justice. Just tell it to call you Billy. It's Creepshow.